Hello, welcome to another session of Digital Forensics and Investigation. This session is based on mobile forensics. So there is no doubt that <clears throat> mobile devices have become part of our daily lives. And as a result of this, a mobile device is now a huge repository that holds sensitive and personal information about its owner. So this has uh, increased the demand for mobile device forensics which is a branch of digital forensics and it deals with retrieving data from mobile devices. So our today's session will include introduction to mobile forensics, challenges in mobile forensics, mobile phone evidence extraction process and mobile forensic approaches. So the world is witnessing uh, technology and user migrations from desktop to mobile phones. So most of the growth in the mobile market can be attributed to the continued demand for smartphones. So today's smartphones such as <clears throat> Apple iPhone and Samsung Galaxy series are compact form of computers with high performance, high, um, huge storage capabilities and enhanced functionalities. So mobile phones are most personal electronic devices or devices that a user accesses. So they are used to perform simple communication tasks such as calling or texting uh, while still perform or provide support for the internet browsing, email uh, services, taking photos and uh, creating videos and also creating and storing some documents, identification, uh, identifying locations with the GPS services and managing uh, various business tasks. So as the new feature and applications are incorporated into mobile phones, the amount of information stored on that device is continuously growing. So mobile phones <clears throat> become uh, a portable data carriers and keep track of all your uh, movements. So with, with, the increase, uh, with the increasing involvements of the mobile phones in people's daily life and also in crimes, Data acquired from those mobile phones becomes an invaluable source of evidence for investigation relating to criminal, civil, and also high-profile uh, investigations. It is rare to conduct a digital um, forensic investigation that does not include a phone. For example, a mobile device call logs and GPS data were used to help in solving attempted bombing attack in Times Square, New York in 2010. And the science behind uh, recovering digital evidence from the mobile phone is usually known as mobile forensics. And <clears throat> digital devices, uh, are the dish, sorry, the digital evidence is defined as the information and data that is stored on or received or transmitted by an electronic device that is used uh, for the investigation. So digital evidence includes all sort of digital data that can be used as an evidence in, in, uh, in the code for that uh, investigation. So as uh, defined previously, mobile forensics is a branch of uh, digital forensics, which is related to the recovery of uh, digital evidence from the mobile device. Forensically sound, is the term <clears throat> that is used extensively in the digital forensics community to qualify and also to justify the use of particular forensic technology or methodology. The main principle for a sound forensic examination of the digital evidence is that the, <clears throat> the original evidence must not be modified. This is extremely difficult with mobile devices. Some forensics tools require a communication with the mobile device so a standard right protection will not work during the forensic acquisition. Other forensic <clears throat> acquisition methods may involve removing a chip or installing a bootloader on the mobile device prior to extracting the data from, for the forensic examination. So in those cases where the examination or data acquisition is not possible without changing the configuration of the device of the mobile device, the procedures and the changes must be tested, validated, and well documented. Also, <clears throat> following proper methodology and guidelines is crucial in examining a mobile device as it produces most valuable data. 
So <clears throat> the mobile forensic process is broken down into three main categories. First is seizing the device, then acquisition, and then examination or analysis of that data. <clears throat> The forensic examiners also face some challenges while seizing a mobile device at this, uh, as an evidence at the crime scene. So at the crime scene, if the mobile device is found switched off, the examiner should place the device in a Faraday bag. So Faraday bags are specifically designed to isolate mobile phones from the network. If the mobile phone is found switched on, switching it off has a lot of concerns attached to it. If the phone is logged by a PIN or a password or encrypted, the examiner will require to bypass those logs and determine the PIN to access that device. So mobile phones are network devices as well, as you know, <clears throat> and can send and receive data through different sorts of uh, uh, resources or uh, through the network, such as telecommunication system, Wi-Fi access points, and Bluetooth. So if the mobile phone is in the running state, a criminal can securely erase data which is stored on the phone by executing a remote wipe command. So when a phone is switched on, it should be placed in a Faraday bag. If possible, prior to placing uh, the mobile phone in a Faraday bag, disconnect it from the network to protect the evidence uh, by enabling the flight mode and also uh, disabling all network connections, for example, Wi-Fi connection, GPS connections, hotspots, and if there is any, so disable all those uh, communication connections. This will also preserve the battery, which will drain when you will put that mobile phone in the Faraday bag and protect against the leaks in the Faraday bags. So once the mobile device is seized properly, the examiner may need several forensics tools to acquire and analyze data stored on that mobile phone. So mobile phones are dynamic systems <clears throat> that presents a lot of uh, challenges to the examiner in extracting and analyzing digital evidence. So the rapid increase in the number of different kind of mobile phones from different manufacturers makes it difficult for uh, to develop a single process or a single tool to examine all type of those mobile devices. Also, mobile phones are continuously evolving as existing technology progresses and uh, new technologies are introduced. Each mobile phone is also designed with a variety of embedded operating system. So a special knowledge and skills are required from the forensic expert to acquire and also to analyze that mobile device. So one of the biggest forensic challenge when it comes to the mobile platform is the fact that data can be accessed, stored, synchronized on a multiple devices or on the multiple uh, platform. As the data is volatile and can be quickly transformed or deleted remotely, more effort is required for the preservation of that data. So mobile forensic is different from the computer forensics and also presents uh, unique challenges to the uh, forensic examiners. Law enforcement and forensic examiners often try to struggle to obtain digital evidence from the mobile devices. Some of the reasons uh, may include like hardware differences. So the market is flooded with a different model of the mobile phones from different manufacturers. So forensic examiners may come across different types of mobile devices or device uh, mobile models which differ in size, <clears throat> hardware, features, and also in the operating systems. So with a short production development cycle, new model emerge very frequently, as you know. And as, as the mobile landscape is changing each passing day, so it is critical for the examiner to adopt to all, uh, all those changes and remain up to date uh, on the mobile device forensics techniques across various uh, devices. Another uh, challenge could be the mobile operating system. So unlike the personal computers, where window has a dominant uh, dominated the market uh, for years, mobile uh, devices widely use uh, more operating systems. For example, it includes uh, Apple iOS, Google Android, uh, RIMS Blackberry operating systems, 
Microsoft Windows Phone operating systems, uh, and many others. So even <clears throat> within these operating systems, there are several versions which makes the task of the forensic investigator even more uh, difficult. Mobile platform security feature is another issue that uh, can, there is another challenge uh, that the uh, examiner faces. So a modern mobile platform contains built-in security features to protect user data and privacy. And these features act as a hurdle during the forensic acquisition and also during the examination. For example, uh, modern mobile devices comes with default encryption mechanisms from the hardware layer to the software layer. The examiner might need to break through these encryption mechanisms to extract data from the device. One of the fundamental rules in the forensics is to make sure that data on the device is not modified. In other words, we can say that any attempt to extract data from the device should not alter the data which is present on that device. But this is not practically possible with mobile phones because just switching on the device can change the data on that device. Even if the device appears to be in the off state, background processes may still run. For example, in most of the mobile phones, the alarm clock still works even when the mobile phone is switched off. So a sudden transition from one state to another state may result in the loss or uh, in the modification of data. Anti forensic techniques such as data hiding, data obfuscations, and secure wiping makes investigations on the digital media more difficult. If the device is protected with a passcode, the forensic examiner needs to gain access to the device without damaging the data on the device. So there are techniques to bypass the, uh, the screen locks, but uh, uh, they may not, work, may not always work on all the versions. With the growing number of mobile phones, the tools required by the forensic examiner should also increase. And the forensic acquisition accessories such as uh, USB cables, batteries, and charges for different mobile phones have to be maintained in order to acquire images or uh, evidence from those devices. <clears throat> Dynamic nature is, uh, is an another uh, a challenge in the mobile phones, so digital evidence may be easily altered uh, either intentionally or unintentionally. For example, uh, browsing an application on the phone might alter the data stored by that application on the device. Mobile phones provide features to reset everything. So resetting the device accidentally while examining it may also result in the loss of data. And the possible ways to alter the device may range from moving application data or renaming files to modifying the manufacturer's operating systems. So in this case, the expertise of the a suspect should be taken into account. Communication shielding is another challenge. So mobile device, uh, devices usually communicate over a cellular network, Wi-Fi network, Bluetooth, and even on the infrared net, uh, interface. So as the device communication might alter the device data, the possibility of further communication should be eliminated after seizing that mobile device. So lack of availability of the resources and tools is another challenge. So there is a wide range of mobile devices as discussed. So a single tool may not support all the, uh, those devices or, or perform uh, all the necessary functions. So a combination of tool needs to be used. So choosing uh, a right tool for a, for, a, for a particular mobile phone might be difficult. So there might be some malicious program. So the device might contain uh, some like uh, malicious software or malware such as uh, viruses or trojans. So such malicious program may attempt to spread over other devices or the uh, network either using wired or wireless networks. There are also some legal issue challenges. So mobile devices might, uh, uh, might be involved in crimes which can uh, cross some geographical boundaries. So in order to tackle these uh, multi-jurisdictional issues, the forensic examiner should be aware of the nature of the crime and also uh, some regional laws. 
Okay, so <clears throat> evidence extraction and forensic examination of each mobile device may differ. Following a consistent examination process will assist the forensic examiner to ensure that the evidence extracted from each mobile phone is all well documented and that uh, the results are reputable and defendable. So there is no well established and standard process for the mobile forensics, but uh, this flowchart provides an overview of the process consideration for the extraction of evidence from mobile device. All method used in extracting data from the mobile device should be tested, validated, and well documented. So the evidence intake phase is the starting phase <clears throat> and involves request, uh, request forms and uh, paperwork to document the ownership information um, and the type of the, uh, uh, and the type of the incident the mobile device uh, is involved in. Uh, and it also outlines the type of the data or the information the requester is seeking. So developing a specific objectives for each examination is a critical part of that phase. So while seizing a device, care should be taken not to modify any data present on that device. At the same time, any opportunity that might help the investigator <coughs> or the investigation should not be missed. For example, at the time of seizing, that, that device, that mobile phone. If the device is unlocked, then try to disable the passcode. So identification phase comes after the intake phase. So the forensic examiner should identify a couple of details for every examination of the mobile device. For example, the legal authority. So it is important for the forensic examiner to determine and document what legal authority exists for the acquisition and also for the examination of that device. Also, any limitation placed on the media prior to the examination of that device. The examiner will need to identify that how in-depth the examination needs to be uh, based uh, upon the data requested. Also, uh, the examiner needs to identify the make, model, and the information uh, about that device. Also, is there any removable and external storage data with that uh, device or with that mobile phone or no? Also, <clears throat> mobile phones act as a good source of fingerprints and other biological uh, evidence. So such evidence should be collected prior to the examination of that mobile phone to avoid any uh, contamination issues. So examiners should uh, wear proper gloves when handling those uh, mobile devices. Then we have the preparation phase. So once the mobile phone model is identified, the preparation phase involves research regarding a particular mobile phones to be examined and uh, the appropriate methods and the tools to be used for the acquisition and also for the examination purpose. So this is generally uh, done uh, and based on the device model uh, after also the underlying operating system, its versions, and other factors. So choosing a right tool for the examination of the mobile device will be determined by factors such as the goal of the examination, the resources available, and the type of the cellular phone which is uh, going to be examined, and the presence of any external storage capabilities. Then we have the isolation phase. And <clears throat> Uh, in the isolation phase, mobile phones uh, are usually isolated from all type of the networks. And you know that mobile phones are intended to communicate via cellular phones, Bluetooth, infrared, and wireless networks. So when, whenever the mobile phone is connected to a network, new data is added to the phone through some incoming calls or messages uh, or some application data, which modifies the evidence on the phone. So Complete destruction of the data is also possible through some remote access or remote wiping command. And for this reason, isolation of that mobile phone from uh, uh, the communication sources is very important uh, prior to the acquisition and examination of that device. And network isolation can be done by placing the phone in a radio frequency shielding cloth and then putting that phone in the airplane mode or in the flight mode. The airplane mode disables a device communication channel. 
such as uh, uh, cellular radio network, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. But if the device is screen locked, then this is not possible. Also, since Wi-Fi is now available in the airplane mode, so some devices now have a Wi-Fi access enabled in airplane mode. So an alternate solution is isolation of the phone through the use of some Faraday bags, which blocks radio signals to and from the mobile phones. Okay. So after that, we have <coughs> processing phase. So once the phone has been isolated from the communication network, the actual processing of the mobile phone begins. So the phone should be acquired using a tested method that is repeatable and that is also forensically sound if as, my, as possible, as much uh, as possible. So physical acquisition is, uh, is a preferred method as it extracts the raw memory data and the device is commonly powered off during the acquisition process. So on most device, uh, devices, uh, the smallest number of changes occur uh, to the device during that physical acquisition. But if the physical acquisition is not possible or fails, an attempt should be made to acquire the file system on the mobile device. So a logical acquisition should always be obtained as it may contain uh, only the past data and provides pointer to, to examine the raw memory images. After, the process, after processing that phone, the examiner needs to verify the accuracy of the extracted data from the mobile uh, device. This is uh, to ensure that data has not been modified. So the verification of the extracted data can be uh, accomplished in various ways. For example, uh, comparing extracted data to the handset data, or using multiple tools and comparing the result, or using some hash values. The forensic examiner is also required to document uh, throughout the examination process in the form of uh, contemporaneous notes and also relating to what was done during the acquisition and examination process. Once the examiner completes the investigation, the result must go through some form of uh, peer review to ensure that the data is checked and investigation is complete. So the examiner's notes and documentation may include the information such as uh, um, when the examination was start, so the start date and time, the physical condition of the phone, photos of the phone and individual components of the phone, uh, the status of the phone when received, was it turned on or turned off, uh, phone make and model, tools that is used to uh, acquire uh, for the use for the acquisitions, tools which is used for the examinations, data found during the examinations, and also uh, notes from the peer review. So throughout the investigation, it is important to make sure that the information extracted and documented from the mobile devices can be clearly presented to any uh, other examiner or uh, to the court. So creating a forensic report of the data extracted from that mobile device during the acquisitions and analysis is very important. So this may include data in both paper and in the electronic format. So your finding must be documented and presented in a manner uh, that uh, the evidence speaks uh, for, its, uh, for itself uh, whenever it is presented to someone or in the court. So the finding should be clear, concise, and repeatable. And also, Preserving the data extracted from the mobile phone is important part of this uh, for mobile forensic investigation. So it is also important that the data is retained in, uh, unus in a usable format uh, for the ongoing court proceedings, for any further uh, investigation or references, or for the record keeping requirements. So court cases, as you know, may continue for many years before the final judgment is arrived at. So the most uh, jurisdictions require that uh, the data must be retained for a long period of time uh, for the purpose of any appeal, for example. Okay, so similar to any forensic investigations, 
there are several approaches that can be used for the acquisition and examination of the data from the mobile phone. The type of the mobile device, the operating systems, and the sec uh, security settings uh, you generally dictate the procedure which, which needs to be followed in the forensic uh, process. For example, the mobile operating system, uh, mobile forensic tool leveling systems, or data acquisition methods. <clears throat> so one of the major factors in the data acquisitions and the examination of the mobile phone is the mobile operating system. So from low end mo mobile phones to smartphones, mobile operating systems have come a long way in uh, with a lot of features. So mobile operating system directly affects how the examiner can access the mobile devices. For example, Android operating systems gives terminal level access whereas uh, iOS doesn't uh, give such an option. So a comprehensive understanding of the mobile platform helps the forensic examiner to make sound forensic decisions and conduct a conclusive investigation. So currently, two main operating systems dominate the market. One is Google Android and another one is Apple iOS. We have a Windows phone as well. So Android is Linux based operating system. And it's, it is a Google uh, open source platform for the mobile phone. So Android is the world's, uh, you can say, uh, most widely used telephone operating or a smartphone operating system. And Android's open nature has encouraged the developer to build a large number of the applications and upload them onto, on the, onto the Google Play. iOS <coughs> is a mobile operating system which is developed and distributed by Apple. So iOS is also evolving into a universal operating system for all Apple mobile devices such as iPad, iPod, uh, and uh, for the iPhones. So iPhone, iOS manages the device hardware and provides the techn technologies required to implement <coughs> uh, native applications. So iOS also ships with uh, various systems applications such as uh, mail and safari which provide standard system services to the user so ios native applications are distributed through the app store application store which is closely uh, monitored by apple so windows phone is uh, a proprietary mobile operating system which is developed by the microsoft for the smartphones and for the pocket pcs so Windows Phone operating system is similar to the Windows desktop, desktop operating systems, but it is optimized for the device with a small amount of storage. <clears throat> so mobile phone forensic acquisition and analysis involves manual efforts and uh, the use of automated tools as well. So it is a combination of both. So there are a variety of tools that are available for performing mobile forensics. And all of those tools have their own pros and cons. And it is a fundamental that uh, you understand that no single tool is sufficient for all purposes. So understanding various types of mobile forensics tool is also important for the forensic examiner. And the objective of the mobile device forensics tool classification system is to enable the uh, examiner to categorize uh, forensic tools based on the examination methodologies of the tool. So starting at the bottom of the, this classification and working upward, methods and the tools generally becomes more technical, complex, and uh, forensically sound, and requires longer analysis time as well. So there are pros and cons of performing an analysis at each layer. The forensic examiner should be aware of these issues and also uh, should only proceed with the level of the extraction that is required. So evidence can also be destroyed completely if the given method or the tool is not properly utilized. So this risk actually increases as you move up in, in this pyramid. So proper training is required to obtain uh, the highest uh, success rate in the data extraction from a mobile device. So we have the manual extraction method. So the manual extraction method involves simply scrolling through the data on the device 
and viewing data on the mobile phone directly through the use of the uh, device keypad or touch screen. So the information discovered uh, in this phase is the photo, uh, you can like uh, take a photographical evidence or for, you can document it using uh, photographically. So the extraction process is fast and easy to use and it, it will usually work on almost every phone. But this method is uh, prone to human error, such as missing certain data due to unfamiliarity uh, with the interface. So at this level, it is not possible to recover deleted information and grab all data. So there are some tools such as uh, Project A phone uh, that have, have been developed to aid an examiner to easily analyze, uh, easily document uh, a manual extraction and, and analyze it. So this might also result uh, in the modification of the data. For example, weaving um, an uh, unread SMS uh, that can be marked as a read. So uh, we, then we have logical extraction. So the logical extraction involves connecting the mobile uh, device or the mobile phone to a forensic hardware or to a forensic workstation via a USB cable or sometime uh, through a Bluetooth interface as well. So once connected, the computer initiates a command and sends it to, to, to that device, to that mobile phones, which is then interpreted by the device processor. So next, the requested data is received from the device memory and send that data back to the forensic workstation. So later, the examiner can view the data and most of the forensic tools currently available work at this, at this level of the classification system. So the extraction process is fast, easy to use, and require little training for the examiners. <clears throat> On the flip uh, side, so the, the process may write the data uh, to the mobile and might change uh, the integrity of the evidence. So deleted data is uh, usually not uh, included and accessible uh, in this uh, logical uh, extraction process. In, uh, in a hex term, uh, also referred to as a physical extraction is achieved by connecting the device to the forensic workstation and pushing uh, any unsigned code or a bootloader into the phone and instructing the phone to dump memory from the phone to the computer. So the resulting raw image is uh, in the binary format and the technical ex expertise is required to analyze that image. So the process is uh, inexpensive and provides more data to the examiner and allows the recovery of deleted files from the device unallocated space on the most uh, mobile devices. We also have the chip off methods and the chip off refer to, uh, to the acquisition of the data directly from the device memory chip. So at this level, <clears throat> the chip is physically removed from the device and a chip read reader or the second phone is used to extract the data from that uh, chip. So this method is more technically challenging uh, um, as a wide variety of the chip types are used in, in those mobile phones. So the process is expensive and requires hardware level knowledge as it involves the uh, desoldering and heating the memory chips. So training is required to successfully perform uh, a chip of um, extractions. So improper procedures may damage the whole memory chips. Okay. Then we have the micro read uh, options, uh, file system extraction options. So the micro read uh, process involves manually weaving and interpreting data seen on the memory chip. So the examiner uses uh, an electronic microscope and analyze the physical gates uh, on that chip and then translate those gate status to zero or one to determine the resulting ASCII characters. So the whole process is very, very, very time consuming and costly, and it requires extensive knowledge and training on the memory and uh, on the file systems as well. So due to the extreme technicalities involved in the micro read operation, it would only be attempted uh, for the high profile cases relevant to the uh, national security crisis. After all, um, 
if the other level of the extraction techniques have been exhausted and uh, those are not <coughs> giving any information. So the process is rarely performed and is not well documented at this time. So also there are currently no uh, like commercial tools available to perform uh, that micro read uh, uh, techniques. So <clears throat> data acquisition is the process of imaging or uh, otherwise extracting information from the digital devices and its peripheral equipments also, uh, and also uh, other medias. So acquiring data from the mobile phone is not as simple as a standard hard, hard drive forensic acquisitions. So the following uh, points you can say breaks uh, break down the three, diff uh, th three different types of the forensic acquisition methods for the mobile forensics or for the mobile phones. One is the physical acquisition, other one is the logical acquisition, and the third one is manual acquisitions. So these methods may have some overlap with a couple of levels discussed in the in the mobile forensics tools leveling system in the previous slides. So the amount and the type of data that can be collected will vary depend on uh, depending on the type of the acquisition methods which is used to acquire uh, that image. <clears throat> so in the physical acquisition, uh, the physical acquisition of the mobile device is nothing but uh, a bit by bit copy of the physical storage as we do, uh, uh, we do in the uh, computer forensics. So physical extraction acquires information from the device by direct access to the flash memory. So the flash memory is a non-volatile memory and is primarily uh, used in the memory cards and uh, USB flash drives as a solid state storage. So the process creates a bit by bit uh, copy of, uh, of the entire file system similar uh, to the approach taken in the computer forensic examination. So a physical examination or the physical acquisition is able to acquire all of the data present on that device, including the deleted files and access to unallocated space on, the most, uh, on most of the mobile devices. Then we have the logical acquisition. So the logical acquisition is about extracting the logical storage uh, objects such as files and directories that resides on the file systems. So logical acquisition of the mobile phone is performed using um, device manufacturer applications programming interface to synchronize the phone's content with the computer. So many of the forensic tools perform logical acquisition and it is much easier for the forensic tool to uh, organize and present the data extracted through the logical acquisition. So the forensic analyst must understand how the acquisitions occur and whether the mobile uh, uh, mobile phone is modified in any way during that uh, acquisition process or not. So depending on the phone and the forensics tools used, all or some of the data is, uh, is acquired. Okay. So a logical acquisition is, uh, as I said, is easy to uh, perform and only uh, recovers uh, the files on the mobile phones and it does not uh, recover data contained in any unallocated space or delete, deleted files. We have also a manual acquisitions. So with mobile phone, physical acquisition is usually the best options and logical acquisition is the second best option. Okay, Manual extraction should be the last option when performing any forensic acquisition of the mobile phones. Both logical and manual acquisitions can be used to validate findings in the physical uh, data. So during the manual acquisition, the examiner utilizes the user interface to investigate the content of the phone's memory. So the device is used normally uh, through keypads or touch screen. And uh, many navigations uh, and the examiner takes pictures um, uh, of each screen uh, screen's content. So, or you can take also screenshots, but uh, screenshot will store in the memory in the mobile phone. So, better to take picture. So, manual extraction introduces a greater degree of risk in the form of human errors as well. And there is a chance of deleting the evidence. So, manual acquisition is easy to perform and only requires the data that appears on that mobile phone. Okay. So the range of information that can be obtained from the mobile phone is 
uh, detail in this uh, in this slide. So data on the mobile phone can be found uh, in, in a number of locations like SIM card, uh, external storage uh, card, uh, and even in the mobile phone memory. In addition, uh, the service provider also stores communication re uh, related information. So the book uh, primary, uh, so, uh, so the, the, the primary focus uh, uh, is on the data acquired from the memory phone. Uh, in this acquisition process, in the mobile acquisition uh, process. So the mobile uh, device, uh, device data extraction tool recover data from the phone memory, even through the data recovery, uh, that the, so the, sorry, the data recovered during the uh, forensic acquisition depends on the mobile model. And also, uh, it, it, it is it is very important to know uh, that the device model the, the serial number uh, because that is uh, based on that that information uh, you can configure uh, or use the proper tools for for the acquisition process there is also some address boxes address box that contains contact names phone numbers email addresses and uh, other sort of important informations we have call histories as well in the mobile phones, and this contains some dial received, missed, uh, missed calls, or even the and, uh, and also the call durations of each call. The SMS uh, contains the sent and received text messages. MMS contains media files such as uh, sent and received photos and videos. Emails contains sent, drafted, uh, and received emails uh, messages. Web uh, web browser history contains. Uh, um, uh, the history of the websites that were visited on the mobile phones. Photos contains pictures that were captured uh, while using the mobile phone camera. So though or those downloaded from the internet or the ones which is transferred from the other devices via any uh, communication link like internet or uh, using Bluetooth. Video contains uh, uh, that uh, that are captured using the mobile camera or yeah, of uh, similar to the uh, photos uh, downloaded from the internet or transferred from the other devices. Same for the music files downloaded from the internet or those transferred from the other devices. Documents contains the document created using the devices applications or those uh, downloaded from the internet or the ones transferred from the uh, from the other devices. Calendar contains the calendar entries and appointment information. Network communication contains the GPS locations. Maps contain the places the user visited, looked for, uh, for the directions, for example, and search or downloaded some maps. Social networking data contains the data stored by applications such as uh, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google Plus, and even WhatsApp. And we also have the deleted file data, which contains the information about the deleted uh, documents or the deleted uh, content uh, from the phone. So <clears throat> in summary, we can say the mobile device stores a wide range of information such as SMS, call logs, browse, uh, browsing history, uh, chat messages, location details, and many more. So mobile device forensic include many approaches and concepts that falls outside of the boundaries of the traditional uh, digital forensics. So extreme care should be taken while handling uh, mobile device. So right from the uh, evidence intake phase to the uh, archiving phase, which we discussed in the previous slide. So examiners responsible for the mobile uh, device must understand the difference, different acquisition methods and uh, the complexity of handling the data during the analysis phase. So extracting data from a mobile device is a half of the better, we can say. So the operating system, security features, and the type of the smartphone will determine the amount of access you have to the data. So it is important to follow a sound forensic practice and make sure that the evidence is unaltered during the uh, investigation phase. So that brings us to the end of this uh, session. Thank you for your, for the attendance.